What's up guys, Gabriel Varga here. Today we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna break down two of the world's best low kickers. We're gonna look at why they're so effective, why they managed to do so much damage. We're talking about Liam Harrison and Joseph Veltellini. All right guys, we are talking about the low kicks, the devastating low kicks of Harrison and Valtellini. The reason I chose to talk about these two guys together is they have many common traits when throwing the low kick. Now to help me with my demoing, I have my freestanding Bob here. Honestly, not my favorite bag to hit. I just happened to have it lying around. It wasn't being used, so I figured, oh, let's bring it in so I can actually demonstrate for you guys with something to hit. So guys, before I get to sharing my six points on what makes the low kick so devastating from these two guys, please give the video a like, get subscribed if you haven't already, and let's roll on. All right guys, something that I want you to understand about these two fighters is the timing on their low kicks. And generally, this is not all the time, but generally for most fighters, when they step forward and they start trying to hit something hard, they put too much weight on their front leg, which makes it difficult to rapidly check. Their stance is either very wide or they get heavy on their front leg, which allows me to punch very hard, but does not allow me to get that check up fast enough. So these guys take advantage by keeping their hands nice and high, and as somebody attacks, they counter with the low kick. They don't wait for the shot to land. They don't wait for a hit and then counter. As soon as the attack comes, these guys keep their shell, they attack, hits, and they chop. This takes very, very good timing, but even more so than that, you have to be extremely confident in your hand defense and the power of your low kick. Because both these guys have been very successful with this strategy, but even with their world-class level, I've still seen them make errors, and if anybody else is trying this, you need to make sure that you do not let your hand fall out of position, or you do not leave little holes, little gaps. Everything has to be really crunched in and really tight, and you wanna make sure you shut down the person's offense very fast with an extremely hard low kick. If the low kick is too light, and the person throws a punch, and you just go boom, the other guy, he's gonna keep following with his combo. For me, for example, if I was competing against Liam Harrison, one of my main goals would be to enter if I took the low kick, once I've made it here, to keep on punching, to stay right in his face. So if I'm facing towards you guys, and this is something that you wanna try utilizing, you wanna try and be a little bit more like these guys, you have to get very, very good at planting your hands up to your head and throwing that low kick without letting your hands falling away. You wait for somebody to attack. As soon as they attack, you do whatever little defensive move you want or keep your hands fairly square to your head. And then as soon as the attack comes, I do something and right away I throw my low kick. All right guys, moving on to point number two. This is very similar to what we just talked about, but it's worth noting. Most times when people throw low kicks, this is where they end. They swing the hand down for a little bit more momentum. But very often, Veltellini or Harrison, they'll leave their hands right up. They won't sacrifice dropping for more power because it's most important for them to protect their head on both sides. So what you guys can try if you're working away on a bag is don't let your hand drop. Every time you kick, you wanna make sure your hands stay up. And that right there is gonna give you much more protection, much more confidence in throwing your low kick, not getting worried about that counter as often. All right guys, I'm gonna break down a little bit of the technique that these guys use. Very traditionally, when you throw a low kick, the first thing that's gonna happen, if I'm standing sideways, you guys will see my hips are in line. Generally, when most people throw a low kick, they turn their body completely over. You are generally gonna gain more power from more hip movement, but it takes a lot longer. What you will note, Liam Harrison and Joseph Valtellini to do is their hips don't always turn completely 90 degrees they just shift a tiny bit and in doing so you accomplish two things number one the kick is going to be a little bit harder to recognize it's coming and number two it's going to be executed that much faster because you're not waiting for your whole turnover you're just simply keeping your hips square and just snapping that kick in so if i'm facing towards you guys instead of turning the entire body over i just stay a little bit more square with my hips the kick makes direct line as fast as possible to the target and the hands as we were talking previously stay up and i'm not worried about full twist here which brings us right into our next point and that's talking about the pivot generally when i throw a low kick i aim for at least 90 degree pivot if not more like a 180 degree pivot. But these guys quite often, this foot that they're standing on 
it won't turn at all. And that goes right along with their hip action because if my hips turn 90 degrees, my foot has to turn. But if my hips don't turn as far and my foot doesn't turn, then from here, instead of turning the entire body over, I can just snap right in. The kick is extremely fast, therefore harder to check. Therefore, you're gonna land the kick more often. Is it as powerful as a normal kick? It probably lacks a bit of power. I mean, these guys are so fast, the way they get their kick up, that the speed makes up for it. But I bet you if you held a pad for them and you did one kick where they turned over and one where they didn't, the first one would be more powerful. But both these guys very often choose to make a tiny little hip motion, almost no pivot, hands stay up, and from there, they're very protected and they're very, very fast. From here, guys, I wanna move into something unique that Liam Harrison does on his low kicks, and it's kind of a jump into the kick, a little jump switch. Something you don't see very often, it's not overly difficult, it's just I'm in my stance, I lift this leg off the ground for a split second, and I jump into my kick. You'll see him do this time and time again. The main reason I'm thinking he does this is number one, to gain a little bit more power, but more importantly, number two, it allows him to adjust distance very, very quickly. So for example, if I'm out of range right now, I can do my little jump and I'm in range. If I'm very tight and I feel like I'm jammed, instead of having my leg come up and knee hitting, I jump backwards and again I can land. This little jump switch, knee lifts up, over exaggerating, it would be like this leg lifts here, and then I do a scissor round kick, but he just very simply does a fast skip. And even better, if you're wanting to use this, you can practice taking an angle. So instead of finishing right in front, I land off to the side. So if I'm facing towards you guys, instead of going right here, I move off to the side and I can bury my head for a little bit more protection. And finally guys, something that both these fighters do, which is very, very important to not getting their kicks checked, is throwing at a very tight distance. Instead of being way back here, where I kick, there's so much time for this opponent to see that kick raise in the air and the check come, they very often will kick from in here. And they're coming with their shin, Instead of worrying about landing with their foot from this tight range here, you have to be landing with your shin. But if I pivot, my knee hits. So it's already taking in the previous points we talked about where we don't pivot our foot and we don't turn our hips. If I turn my hips, I'm jammed. If I stay fairly square, I can land with my shin, no problem. Hands, as we talked about previously, are up very high because I am within punch range. So from here, I can effectively throw my kick and there's much less chance that it's gonna get checked because most people in this zone here are not worried about the low kicks, they're worried about the defense on the hand. So they get heavy in their legs to base out, which makes the low kick so much more effective if you can throw it from that tight range. Now, of course, guys, these six points that I shared with you are not the only reasons these guys are effective with the low kicks. There will be many others, but if getting better at low kicks is something that you wanna do, you wanna kick more like these guys, try out these six points, see if any of them work for you, and then try implementing Implementing them on your bag work, your shadow boxing, your sparring, and you may find that you start to land that low kick over and over. And if people do not have a conditioned thigh, just like these guys have done to so many people, you'll start to see them buckle. And when that leg starts buckling, things get much easier. People get scared, they get light on that leg, it becomes much easier to land the big punch shots up to the head or the body and put them down. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick, brief breakdown of Joseph Altolini, Liam Harrison how their low kicks are so effective, what they do differently. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you haven't already, get subscribed. Guys, train hard, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.